Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. Welcome back to another lesson. And in this one, we're going to update our user model. And then we're going to edit, edit our database schema. And then we're obviously going to migrate the database. Now, I've decided the approach that we're going to use, we're going to use only one model for our users instead of different models like customers, supervisors, admin instead of having their own table in the database we're only going to use one model now it's a good practice because everyone is a user basically on your website so if it's a customer or an admin or a supervisor or moderator they're all users on the website that's why we use one model but you can obviously use different models for that and use roles and permissions and stuff like that for that as well but in our case, we're only going to stick to one user model and we're just going to assign a default type to that user, a default moderator or an admin. And then we're obviously going to update our schema for that. So in the past, let me just show you about the roles and permissions because I have done a project with that. So we can obviously maybe later do a series where we can do the roles and permissions as well. But let me show you the setup. Now, this is basically a project that I've done in the past. Basically, uh, we create in our user model, and it's basically have a role. And then, basically, we have a pivot table for user role. Now, with the role class. Now, in the roles, basically, we got permissions. Now, a permission belongs to a role, and a role has many uh, permissions. All right, so that's the kind of relationship we set up between the role. And obviously in the permissions, they can say it belongs to many roles. All right, so basically that's the kind of setup that you have. And actually I have different types of models and things like that as well, not just a user model. So, but that's a whole kind of different setup, but that I just wanted to show you that if you wanted to do the role permissions way, this is the way. But I've just chosen just to use only a single user model with different uh, types right there. Right, so enough of that. So let's quickly set up this kind of relationship and things in our user model right here. And then obviously edit our schema and migrate our database. For those that are new, we have done this kind of setup when we did the querying relations for the Joe's workshop. We have done the same thing. All right, so let's quickly set it up here. All right, so what we want to do is we want to return a type, so public uh, function of type. All right, and this is going to be an integer because it's either going to be a 1, 2, or 3. So we're just going to do an integer. And then we're basically going to return integer as this type. Okay. Now we need to create those three constants of the different types. Okay. So basically variables in our uh, model right here. All right, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to have a default user. And a default user, that type will be of one. Okay, then we're going to create another constant. And this one is going to be a moderator like this. And that is going to equal to two. And then we're going to create another one. And that one is going to be admin. And that is going to be three. All right, so this is basically our setup to say, like, determine which type of user this is. Okay, so when we call on the type method right here, it's going to check this type right here. All right, but we will set that up quickly. So this is just basically, uh, but you will see, you will understand in a second. All right, the other thing is, yeah, let's just do it like this protected table. Let's right, just do that as well. So this is the kind of the default setup that you get with your installation. I just wanted to add my protected table in there as well. So protected uh, table, and I can equal that to basically the users table. All right. So that's the kind of setup we have. 
Right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we need to going to determine, so if we call is admin or is a user or all that kind of stuff, we can basically call it on here. So let's do that. So public function. So the first one is moderator. And this is going to return a Boolean for us. So it's either going to be true or it's going to be false. All right. In this case, we're going to return this. All right. Now we're calling on this method right here that we just created. Okay. So we're calling on that method. So if that is equal to self, now the self meaning the class itself. All right. But then we're calling on this right here, the, the constants that we created, the variables. All right. So if that is self equal to the modder. Writer. So basically what if it's checking. So if this type that we're going to pull in from the database. All right. So basically if we call the type. So if that type is equal to one. So if it's going to check this right here. So this will equal to one. As you can see, this will equal to two right there. So if we just highlight it, you can see two. All right. And we're going to do the same thing for the admin. All right. So public function and that is going to be is admin now the admin is basically we're going to check if the if the type is equal to three so return this type so basically we're calling on the method that we created on top right there if that is equal to self dot admin admin right there all right. So basically, if we call on, let's say the user signed in or something like that, it will have a, a type attached to it. Now that type will check if what type the user is. All right. So in order to do this, we need to actually add that type column inside our uh, database schema. All right. So let's do that. So let's go to our schema right here. So under default database migrations, and then we obviously go to our users table right there. Now we can obviously add a whole lot of other things as well. So I can add a table uh, of text, and I just want to add bio in here as well. So if, let's say if people want to read more about the person himself, and I just want to make that nullable so people don't have to actually fill in their bio credentials as well. Otherwise, it will be required. But now the next thing is we need to add that type column right here. All right. So what are we going to do that is basically we're going to do a table where we're going to put it in. Let's put it after the email. All right. So right here. So let's do it like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a small integer. Okay. A small integer. And inside here, we're just basically going to put in that word type. Type like this. But now the thing is, if we, anyone registers on the website, we basically want to assign a default value. So basically, we can do like default. And then we add a one right there. So... Anyone that registers on the website as a user, they will be assigned a default of one. So if the admin wants to moderate someone, they can just change the type to two and the person will be a moderator. But we're going to do that right through the course. So everything we're going to do in steps. All right. So we added that type right there. Now, the next thing that you can do, let's say in our buyer right here, instead of um, you can actually specify the limit right here. So we want to limit the buyer to 160 characters and you want to assign the default like this also to an empty string. Okay. So you can do that as well. Your choice. All right. So that's kind of the setup that you can do or you can just do a bio and you can make it nullable like that. Obviously, because now the user can be able to type in a lot of information about his buyer. 
So, but if you don't want to do that, just limit it to 160. So let me just do this and then just add the default of an empty string like here. Okay. So everyone that signs up will have a default empty bio. Okay. It's all good. And then we edit our type right there. And then obviously now what we can do is we can just migrate the database. As you can see, they added it actually in here as well. That is how many megs, megabits it's allowed for a photo. Now that just comes default with your installations, right? So now the next part is you need to set up your migration. Otherwise you're going to get an error. All right, so for me, I just leave it blank because with my installation, it comes with a database of forum uh, of a root user and an empty password. And obviously, you just need to set that up, obviously, in your um, SQL or whatever, whatever you use. In our case, I'm using PHP my admin, so let me go there. All right, in our case, I just created a forum one right there and I just added it so you can just create a new one and then it will be added right there. All right, so that's all for it. And you just go back to your editor. All right, and then you can just migrate the database. So PHP, Artisan, Migrate. Okay, in my case, I'm just going to do Migrate Fresh. All right, and that's all done. So we all set up. Okay. Now, the next part that we're going to do, obviously, is in your models, we can actually refer to the the property because we added the bio in there just make sure that you add the protected fillable in there as well right and obviously the type otherwise you're gonna get an error now the thing is you see these properties right here we can actually call in these create methods for all these properties right here so basically we can do this so public function and the first one, let's say for email. Now the email will return obviously a string. And then we're just going to return this dot email like this. Now the benefit of this is if you want to, basically we can use mutators and stuff like that and all that kind of stuff. But if you call on this, you can just do user dot email like this you call them basically the property right there and whatever you want to do with the property inside here you can do it inside your model right there all right but we don't have to do that not necessary at all okay but i will do that so if you want to do that you can do that but you don't have to all right okay so that's it for us in this lesson in the next one we're gonna be adding more models so we need to add the whole lot of different models and we're just going to do it step by step and i don't want to keep the videos too long as i remember with the blog series people were complaining my videos are a little bit too long right so i just want to keep them short and sweet but we will do a lot more videos because of the shortness of the lessons all right thank you guys for watching and give it a like if you liked the video and give it a dislike if you don't like the video and yes, positive or negative feedback, always appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.